This gaming PC build was honestly never supposed to happen. I made one very critical mistake that anybody can make and this PC build kind of just popped up out of nowhere. Let me explain. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. I have a lot of explaining to do today. A couple of months ago, I was ordering parts for a different PC and ended up making such a stupid mistake, but that mistake eventually evolved into creating this certified baller gaming PC. Hopefully you all saw the video, but about a month ago, I uploaded my own personal ITX build that looks super sick for my home office. It's rocking an i9 10850K, 32 gigs of RAM, and RTX 3070, and it's all inside this beautiful NR200P ITX case. The thing about ITX gaming PCs is that they need an ITX motherboard to work. It sounds obvious, but no, I completely screwed that part up. To this day, I still don't know how this happened, but when searching for the perfect ITX motherboard, I accidentally bought this Asus ROG Strix Z490 Micro ATX motherboard, and this was obnoxiously expensive at $240. I honestly think it was the price that made me think it was ITX. $240 for a motherboard is just outrageously expensive, especially for someone like me that usually doesn't even overclock. So fast forward about a week later, and here I am with a $240 micro ATX motherboard for an ITX build. Obviously this didn't work out so well, so I had to buy another ITX motherboard, and obviously I could have simply returned the micro ATX board, but a guy like me is actually super busy, and I ended up just shelving the motherboard accidentally until my Amazon return window ran up and it was too late. I was now stuck with a $240 motherboard that I couldn't return, so there was only one thing left to do, build a certified baller gaming PC, that was micro ATX. The build turned out great, but I'm still kind of salty about losing all that money, so I'm gonna run a quick pre-roll ad if you don't mind. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options, I'd recommend PayPal, and within a minute or so you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter, choose change product key, paste in your new key, and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs, check out my purchased order history here, so grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. Alright, so now that we know the origin, let's quickly go over all the parts inside this micro ATX gaming PC so we can get to the headshotting sniping montages in the benchmarking section. First up is the CPU, and here I picked out the Intel i5-10600K. I paid $230 for this, but man, this CPU has been going on some ridiculous sales lately because of the 11th gen chips coming out soon, and you can get this CPU for like $150 right now, which is just some crazy value. The 10600K is packing 6 cores and 12 threads with a boost of up to 4.8 gigahertz before overclocking, and that's obviously a killer combination for a gaming PC. For cooling the 10600K, NZXT kindly sent out their Kraken Z53 AIO. I'm absolutely in love with this Z lineup as you can not only show your temperatures and relevant data on the LCD screen, but you can essentially throw any design on here that you want, all while keeping your CPU very nice and chilly. For RAM, we have this 2x8GB 3200MHz Corsair RGB Vengeance Pro SL. Shout out to Corsair for sending this out by the way. This is their newest version of the Vengeance Pro RGB series, and boy is this a clean looking kit of RAM. Next up for storage, I simply bought this Samsung 970 EVO 500GB M.2 NVMe drive, nothing too fancy on this one to be honest. Same thing for the power supply, this is the Antec Neo EcoGold 700W unit, rocking that nice gold efficiency rating and that very nice tier B rating on the LTT list though. Attached to that power supply, which is arguably more important in my opinion, this is the Formula Mod Gray and Blue Cable Extension Kit, and oh baby does this really tie the build scheme together. I'm absolutely in love with this color scheme, I did have to go back and forth on if I wanted the AIO tubes to be in front or behind behind the 24 pin connector, but I think I like it this way how it's kind of showing off the color scheme a bit more. For the case, this here is the Thermaltake S100, and to be honest guys, I really didn't like how this one turned out. On the website, this is a lighter gray color, but here in real life, this is almost as black as black gets. I was actually trying to get an all gray micro ATX build, but I just couldn't find that many options. This looks good obviously, but it just doesn't look as baller as I wanted it to. The case itself is fine, didn't have any issues working inside of it, and other than the color, I don't really have much to say 
way about it. For cooling inside the case, Arctic actually sent over the new Bionix P120 ARGB fans. These are like those Lee and Lee fans where they are cableless and they simply connect by stacking them. Rather than magnets though, they had these little seven pin connectors, but I'll admit, I definitely struggle with these and I really wouldn't recommend them to a beginner PC builder. You can see on my Twitch live stream, I live stream all of my gaming PC builds just like this one over on twitch.tv slash Turf, by the way. I spent way more time trying to install this because it was pretty difficult to get this tiny little connector to line up properly with the fan above or below it, all while inside the case already, and I may have been swearing a little bit while doing this out of frustration. I think the end product of these fans looks great. I love how super diffused the RGBs are, and I definitely like how you can see it through the vents up here at the front. I would just really not recommend these if you're a first time PC builder. And finally, saving the best part for last, remember we gotta extend that YouTube watch time, so we save the GPU till the end, and shout out to Micro Center for sending out this Gigabyte Eagle OC RTX 3060 Ti. As you guys know, Micro Center is a dream store to us PC builders. Not only do they have the best CPU and mobile combo deals around, but lately they've been the most reliable method of getting your hands on a 3000 series graphics card like the one we're using here today. I'm gonna use the very tiny platform that I do have while Micro Center is watching and tell them, you guys really need to open up a store out here in Pittsburgh. You have at least one customer that would be willing to spend thousands of dollars every single month. So can you please make that happen? They're also hooking you guys up with some free stuff, so make sure you check out those links down in the description. With the wishful thinking aside, here's what the final parts list is looking like for this gaming PC that essentially wasn't supposed to be built, but boy am I glad that it did. I'm not entirely happy that a simple wrong motherboard purchase caused this to happen, but I gotta imagine it's gonna perform like an absolute monster in the benchmarking section. Speaking of which, we'll start with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and here we had to jack that resolution up to 1440p, obviously with the 3060 Ti and with high settings and ray tracing turned off, I got an average FPS of 162. <laughs> No chance, guys. Sit down. I'm telling you, everybody sit down. Sit down. Woo! I'm feeling dangerous today. Next up, we have Valheim, just for some more repping of that exclusive AFZTT dedicated server, and in 1440p with high settings, I got 82 frames per second. Assassin's Creed Valhalla followed up after that, and in 1440p with high settings, I got 75 FPS. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege, and just like always, using the built-in benchmarking tool, this game was no match for this PC, as in 1440p with very high settings, it got 297 FPS. Everyone's favorite Fortnite was up after that, and in 1440p with pro settings, I got 286 frames per second. My personal favorite competitive shooter still is Rogue Company, although it still has that stupid baked in 150 FPS cap. Why can't we remove this yet? Seriously. And in 1440p with ultra settings, it got 147 frames per second. Borderlands 3 tailed up after that and using the benchmarking tool in 1440p with high settings, I got an average FPS of 90. And for the last gaming benchmark and sniping montage, we have Valorant and in 1440p with high settings, I got an obnoxious 241 FPS. <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling dangerous in this one too. Real dangerous. No chance, bro, no chance. Sit down. You sit down too. And you sit down three. You four! Literally everybody just take a seat, four for four. Hope you all enjoyed the montages this week. Just like always, we'll wrap up the benchmarks with 3D Mark Time Spy, and this gaming PC cranked out a very impressive five digit score with 10,822. Just like always, if you need another example of a gaming PC around this similar price point, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now. That's actually the ITX build that I was talking about earlier, so check that one out if you haven't already. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.